everybody, welcome back to Recordology, and welcome once again to the fabulous 1968 Magnavox 4-track solid state stereo tape recorder. Whew, that's a lot to say, but this thing is beautiful. I love this thing. We reviewed it. We've talked about it, but today we're not really so much focused on this. We're focused on this. This is an album that we're going to review. This is the first time I've ever reviewed an album on tape. This is a sampler by Phase 4 Stereo, and for you record collectors, you know that that is a desirable label uh, or a desirable addition, an iteration of a record. This is on London Records. They just sound great. They sound really, really good. Phase 4 Stereo, popular music sampler, number two, 23 selections from the Phase 4 Stereo catalog. 70 minutes of the most exciting music you will ever hear you will have ever heard <laughs> played for you by 12 great London recording artists and there are the names of the artists on the back here it's got the typical stuff you would see with an album you've got the uh, you know the catalog number this is you know produced with Ampex tape industry standard I mean that's good stuff professional professional all the way as you would expect from a commercial recording so if you're like me, you don't see a lot of pre-recorded tape. I mean, you never, ever see, like, a pre-recorded tape like this, you know, at the in the free bin or even at a record shop or at a thrift store, more or less. So to have this is really cool. This is a gift from Fartemark, a.k.a. Peter Landry, who will uh, blow your mind with the cool stuff that he can do. And he gifted this to me, and it's really, really cool. Now, I, being the consummate idiot have recorded over part of it by accident because I wasn't doing my job of, interesting how this hinges up. I wasn't doing a good job of knowing what I had on here even though it's got a label. And I thought I had a blank, a blank reel and I recorded about 30 seconds over the front of this. Unlike a record or even a pre-recorded tape that has copy protection, there is nothing to stop you from recording over this. You can tell that the tape is a very light color which is typically meaning it's not as high quality. Some people will disagree with that assessment, but from my experience, the darker the tape formulation, the better. In here, we've got some swag. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, this is cool. So just discussing the recording process, the EX recording process on here, which is really, really interesting. This looks like some sort of headroom extension. I'm going to read up on that. There's a good show idea in and of itself. You can uh, mail away for a catalog. Really cool. I wish this stuff was still active. Sometimes I wonder about those old addresses. Like, what happens if I send in a letter? So let's go ahead and thread this tape. And we'll give a listen on here. You've got a stereo sticker. It's on a typical Ampex 7-inch acrylic reel. You've got the label here, which occupies the top half of the reel. Typical of a pre-recorded tape. And the list of songs. That's all there is to it. It will say the speed, seven and a half inches per second. That's the highest quality that's commonly available. So we're gonna flip this to seven and a half inches. The more, when it comes to analog media, I always say it, the more the merrier. The more media you're passing, past the record head, past the stylus, whatever, faster speeds, et cetera, et cetera, is going to be a better quality. So when I got this tape player, I wanted it to be a vertical tape player. I don't know why I wanted it to be that way, but if you remember in my show about the rubber feet, I said that I had put rubberized feet on the bottom. As you can see, there's no place for them because this is designed to lay. It's a flat back. I don't know if that's what it's called, but it lays on its back, and that's the proper way to play this tape deck. One of the issues I had is the reels kept popping off. Now, you'll notice there's no caps on here. There's no hub caps? Hub caps? Is it really called that? There's nothing to you know keep that from popping off, and these are actually tapered. So they kept falling off. And I realized, you know what? Why am I trying to push a rope up a tree here? So let's go ahead and thread it. This is probably the part that I am not that good at. You may say to yourself, well, that's because you didn't grow up with this stuff. Actually, I did. We did have a tape recorder. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can find the little notch. People that are pros at this are laughing because I'm probably using every wrong term and everything. The best way to do is to just find your little notch here and get your tape in like that. You don't need a whole lot of tension because you spin it around the first couple times by hand unsuccessfully. <sighs> like 
that. This is what I'm terrible at. This is what I'm terrible at. You can just take the tape and like pull it up like this and do it that way, but that's not the proper way to do it. So I'm going to try and do things the right way, not the lazy way. So again, I'm going to place said tape. Now, this type of tape, unlike compact cassette tape, etc., etc., is thicker because it's designed to be handled. You may feel like, oh my gosh, I'm touching tape. I shouldn't be touching the tape. They know you're touching the leader, the first part. There's no music usually on this. Now, this is kind of interesting. A lot of tape will have like a colored leader um, on, although is it called a header at the beginning and a leader at the end? Or is it always a leader? Let me know down in the comments below. But there'll be like a clear red or green, depending on what end of the reel you're on, section that's super designed to be handled. Sometimes, like this, you don't get an actual colored leader. You just get a an area that you're expected to know what to do. Okay, so it's sticking through there, but I am in there properly. So I'm going to fast forward a bit because, like I said, oops, I'm off. Helps if you turn it on. It helps if it's powered on, and I'm going to fast forward a bit so we get past the part where my idiot self recorded over this. Sorry, Peter. I don't think I told you I did that. <laughs> I've got this connected uh, through my switch in the back there, my spaghetti of wires into uh we're running the persona speakers but they're uh, about three feet away and around the corner a little bit so you are going to hear kind of ambient room noise not you know the the quality sound that you would normally get we're just we're just checking it out okay so this is still the part that i had recorded over let's fast forward some more shameful i know shameful 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 it's a real bummer because this is really good music too Okay, let's turn the volume down on that. Good Lord. Okay, so this is... Wow, that was a lot hotter level than the... So the quieter music was what I recorded like an idiot. Um, now, the louder music is the proper level recording of the pre-recorded tape. It's hot. It's really hot. If you look at the VU meters there, we're peaking right in the just above zero there so it should be good but man it sounds almost distorted hot let me think if i'm doing anything really stupid i'm not running through a preamp hmm. i guess it's not distorted it just sounded a bit it sounded a bit hot to me let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit the squeakiness is because this uh, take up reel is a little bit warped so for the beginning of it it squeaks on the tape this part right here as it's coming around so my apologies there okay let me try again that does sound good um i'm gonna do a little sound shaping over here. Turn down the high end a little bit. Turn up the low end. Scoot forward here on the tape. That label is very trippy looking up. <laughs> I think my, uh, I think we're doing 30 frames at 4K right now. I'm not sure what my shutter speed is, so. Sometimes that can make it look weird. Now, one thing we can do as well is we can flip the tape over. It is two-sided, just like a record. So what we're hearing right now is only half of that real estate on that tape. So once it gets to the end, we can flip the tape over and listen to the opposite side. How would we do that? We would, And I'm not going to do it on the show because we're already in nine minutes, but we'd literally take this take-up reel, which would be full of music at that point, and we would flip it upside down onto the supply reel like that, and from there... Um, we would put this as the take up reel and then play it back. And then by the time you're done, it would be spooled up again, ready to go. Awesome. Good music. That's really cool. And that's about it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and rewind it here. Um, I love this format. I love it. I love it. I love it. This tape player is great. It still smells a little smoky. It came from a smoker house and I've done videos before on how filthy it was and all we had to do to clean it and try to get the smell out. It's still, it needs to be opened up and like 
fumigated on the inside. That's one thing I haven't done. I've taken the top off and gone in and cleaned all the mechanics and oiled and lubed everything, but I haven't gone behind the board and uh, really gotten to that level. So if you do come across these, I would definitely hold on to them, even if you don't have a tape deck yet. If you want a tape deck, you can find one of this caliber. This is a consumer entry-level deck, nothing fancy, for somewhere in the neighborhood of you know 50 to $100 if you keep your eyes peeled for it. They're not impossible to find. They are harder to find, definitely harder to find than you know a record player, but they're out there. And if you really want to get fancy, get a 10-inch reel, a Kai machine or something, Sony, you can really go to town. And this is, like Techmon says, the audio file format. You can get the best fidelity around. People think of tape, and they think, oh, the tape doesn't sound good. That's a misnomer. That's a misnomer. That, a lot of that has to do with cheap cassette tape players of the 1980s and 90s that didn't even do justice to that format, let alone you know, studio tape. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.